All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for May 1st, 2023 at 6 p.m. at the Shelter House. Even though I'm not sure. I feel like December instead of May, but we'll get up there. So, uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. All right, and tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Preston. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. Thank you for our city and our citizens. Please guide us in this meeting that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alright, moving on, we need action on the uh, minutes for uh, April 17th, no move. 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion on the minutes council? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Alright. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. All right. Moving on to communications. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. Uh, so tonight we have a boarding uh, zoning appeals uh, hearing. So, just in case the public is wondering why we're here for council, so we have having a hard time difficulty uh, filling the board zoning appeals board. So, council passed some legislation, I think, last year to act as, uh, act as the board of zoning appeals when they do not have a full board. So, that's why we're here tonight. So what we have in front of the Board of Zoning Appeals tonight is a its case name is Clark County uh, Clark Land Re 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 I cannot say that word reutilization habitat home builds. Um, so basically, what is going on here is uh, the habitat for humanity in Clark County land reutilization has already been approved uh, by the Planning Board for lot splits on uh, Madison Street School site to take the frontage there to put four homes uh, for uh, family use. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the planning board has already approved the lot splits on a condition that the project goes through. And what we have in front of council tonight is a, a few variances. So right now, the property zoned over there is R2. That is uh, low density residential. So that means bigger yards with bigger houses. Uh, unfortunately, that kind of zoning is not going to fit with the Habitat and Clark uh, Land Bank uh, builds. So with that, we do have to apply for a variance. And it's really just a temporary variance because the planning board will start the zone chain process at the May 16th meeting and both the planning board and the city council will vote on that official zone change. We're doing this tonight just to get the project going along because that zone chain process can take anywhere from 60 to 90 days. So these numbers are kind of big with the variance are requested that but that is solely just because of the current zoning over there, which is R2. So the, the, they need a variance from the minimum lot size requirements. That is uh, our code section 1252.07. And that is lots one, two, three, and four. And that's in the packet as lots one, two, three, and four. Uh, right now in R2, the minimum zoning standards for a lot is to be 21,780 square feet. And right now the actual square footage of each lot is 10,850. So they are seeking a 10,930 foot variance, a, a square foot variance. Again, this is just temporary till we go in and assign the appropriate zoning, which will be starting that on May 16th. Minimum lot width. Uh, this section is code uh, is governed by section 1252.07, and that is all four lots as well. The minimum lot width is 100 feet. Uh, right now we have 70 feet, so we are asking for a 30 foot variance. The side setbacks, that is governed by 1252.08. So these are individual variances for the lot. So lot one, they will need an 8.1 variance needed. The code requirements is 15 foot one side, 35 total. So what that means is if one side is 35, the other side has to be 20. So both sides have to equal up to 35. But one side has to be a minimum of 15. So another example, one side is 20. The other one has to be 15. You have a total of 35. So lot one, they have a 15 foot six inch side one setback. Their uh, other side setback is 11 feet three inches. That's a total of 29 feet 
26 feet 9 inches, so they are seeking an 8 foot 1 inch variant. Uh, we have an 18, on, uh, excuse me, on lot 2, uh, side 1 is 18 and a half feet, I mean 18 5 inches, side 2 is 7 inches, with a total of 25 feet 5 inches. They are seeking a 9 feet 5 inch variant, lot 3. Uh, 3 foot side 1, side 2 is 3 feet. Six foot total, and that is because it's a ranch house as opposed to a compacted house like this. That is a 29 foot variance. Lot four, uh, ten, side one is 10 feet nine inches. Side two is 17 feet two inches. Uh, total is 28 one. They are seeking a six foot nine inch variance. So I have some staff notes. Some of it may be redundant, bear with me. So tonight's discussion should only be around the variance requested, and that is because uh, the uh, planning board and council will be changing the zoning here in the uh, coming weeks. The variance requested tonight are based off R2 zoning standards. These requested variances will be temporary and shall permit the residential builds to be constructed while the city is in the process of changing the zoning, which is a timely pro process. Future zoning will change as indicated below. Uh, the planning board will review the site plans and elevations at the May 16th, 2023 meeting. Both the planning board and city council will have the opportunity to vote on the actual zoning classification change at a later date. And I've I included a box here chart that has the lot information. <coughs> Staff recommendation is the board of zoning appeals should grant the variance to allow the project to move on to the next steps, which is the planning board site approval and then both the planning board and city council changing the zoning uh, on these split parcels. This timely <laughs> process can take upwards of 60 to 90 days. That is all we have for the staff report. We do have a representative here from the Clark County Reutilization Corporation. His name is Alex Dietz. Mr. Dietz, if you could take the podium there, state your name and uh, corp uh, the agency you're with. Thanks, Randy. Good evening, Council. I'm Alex Dietz with the Clark County Land Bank, so you don't have to use the mouthful reutilization corporation every time. Uh, I also work in the County Economic Development Department. That's kind of what I do full time. And then I uh, help administer the land bank on the side, if you will. Um, so Randy kind of set it up perfectly. We're looking to build four new houses here. The land bank would build two of these homes on, on two of the lots on Madison Street. Uh, Habitat for Humanity would build the other two. They already have families identified for those. Uh, we, we would be working to identify ours as we build the houses. Um, so I can kind of answer any specific questions you have, um, but otherwise just happy to see this keep moving forward in the process. Appreciate your time. And thank you guys for your willingness to work with us on these. I know these were, uh, this was city owned property. So we're, we're excited to get four new homes built and get four new families in a new Carlo. Thank you, Mark. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Beats? Um, Sorry, Mr. Kirby. Mr. Dietz, do you know which two lots are you looking at? Are you wanting two or three or four? Uh, so in total, all will transfer to the land bank. Mm -hmm. We will transfer lots one and two to the uh, to Habitat. Okay. We will build on three and four. All right. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Hendry. When any of these houses going to have garages attached to them or not? Yeah, those those are garage. Do you have the, the you have the rendering in front of you? I, I thought the little squares was garages, but then I thought I seen on one of them it said a sidewalk going up to it, and I go, hmm, four foot sidewalk isn't going to get a car up it. Yeah, that's that's a driveway. That's why I was asking. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Right. Here's all the questions, sir. Thank okay. you. Great, thank you, guys. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks for your time. One, Mr. Mayor, Sir. one more question for you. Uh, how long will it take to build these? The hope. Once it starts. Yeah, once we get the preliminary engineering done and the site work done, um, the hope that it's obviously as quick as possible. Uh, we'd like to have them done, preferably by November. Um, so that's, that's going to be our goal. November this year, correct? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. <clears throat> so, Council, um, it, it, multiple ways you could do that. If everyone is in agreement with the variance requested, I could reread this, um, the variance that I, I stated earlier. You guys can approve it in, in one swipe if that's okay with the clerk, or you guys can do each individual variance and vote on them. If you do each individual variance, that'll be one, two, six. One for each of the lot setbacks, and then two for the lot sizes on each, four, each of them. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Oh. 
Sir. <laughs> that's what they were saying all, so is that what you're Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say, that I, I think we should just vote on, this, on the lot. <coughs> so I guess we'll do it all at one point. Oh, okay. Can we read again for the if record? You, yeah, sure, go ahead. Sure. Um, so the council will be making a motion for the following variances. Minimum lot size, a 10,930 square foot variance for lots one, two, three, and four. A 30 foot variance for minimum lot width, that's for lots one, two, three, and four. Side setback, lot one, eight feet, one inch. Uh, setback variance, side setback variance, is very crucial we say side. Uh, lot two, nine feet, five inch side setback variance. Lot three, a 29 foot setback <coughs> variance. And lot four, a 6.9. Six feet nine, six foot nine inch variance, side setback variance. And we need a motion for that? Yes. Second. There's a question on the floor. Uh, I, I'll ask it after the okay. so We have a motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. And then Mr. Lindsay has a question. Has the zoning board approved all these yet? I see nothing from the zoning board, or is it coming? It's coming. You guys will have your chance to look at this, uh, to change the official zoning after May 16th. This is just temporary. That's what I just, I stated when I was given the case report. And it's still gonna be all these same setbacks. Well, if we had a problem with it after the May 16th? You won't, because you're gonna put this, you're gonna, we're gonna put a, a zoning classification that's appropriate for what they're building. Okay. Whether it be R4, R5, or R7. Okay, thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. So there will be no variances after. More than likely. Okay. Thanks, sir. Mr. Bunny. On these, are they going to have access to the back of their property? There is no alley being constructed now. Somehow, okay. My, my only question is the one that it only has three feet between the garage and their property line. That's, that's narrow. It's very similar to what we have in Northwoods. Okay. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. there's not going to be much room to get a mower through there other than a push mower uh, or something, you know, if, if their neighbor wants to put something up. Like sure. That. So that's mm -hmm. my, own, my only thing. The other ones all have plenty of room, I think, but mm -hmm. um, it is going to limit their ability to get in the backyard and do certain things back there. They'll still be able to get in their backyard. They just want to get like, It'd be hard for them to decide of their garage, but I just want to stress we have many houses in Northwoods that are zoned R7. Minimum setback is three feet, so you already have that a lot in the city where you have some. Um, so, but yeah, it is a very good observation. Well, if they, yeah, if they make some way of, yeah, get mm -hmm. back to the drive or something with design, I don't know what the official design you know, mm -hmm. will be, but that's just, good question. may not be sure. something that somebody really likes. Hey, that's fine. Yep, thank you. All right, Ms. Burr. Okay. Councilwoman, you were the second, right? Sorry, I wrote it in the wrong thing. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. <coughs> yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That motion passes six to one. All right, thank you. And uh, did you have anything else from your dad before we move past that? I'm good. All right, thank, thank you, you everyone. Uh, well, back to you regardless. Oh, it is city manager report time. Yes. Great, awesome. All right, let me get myself in order here. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, members of the public. So we have some discussion topics to get through, not too many. Um, so the first one is land conservation grant to city swimming pool. So what we learned very late last week was um, we were doing our due diligence on selling the pool, um, as we've had many discussions on. Um, so part of that process is what we call discovery. You go and you find out as much as you possibly can before you put a purchase agreement together and all that great stuff. 
So during that process, we had found out that the city of New Carlisle back in 1960-ish, whenever they bought the pool about that time frame, took out a nature work grant that was classified as land conservation. So what that means for us is that um, we have to keep the, we have to keep that land open as a public use. Um, the pool itself does not have to stay. If that becomes obsolete, that's fine. We just have to keep that particular land open for public use, which means we cannot sell it to a private entity. Um, so I have information that was sent to me from the Nature Work Grant uh, folks. I also have the copies of both grants the city signed back in the day. Unfortunately, what I'm saying is, as of right now, the selling of the pool is going to be impossible to figure out what we're going to do moving forward. So there is a conversion thing that you can do. Um, I'm still looking into that. I've got about 15 to 16 pages of documents I'm going through to get a memo sent out to council that details what the current situation is, why it came about, how do we get out of it if we can. Um, but I need to make sure that is 100% accurate before I make that a public document. Um, so I just wanted to update everyone right now that the pool sale is on hold until further notice. Um, and it has to do with the land conservation grant. So apparently, if you go down to our pool building, I've never seen it, but apparently it's there. There is a plaque that says land conservation. That's exactly what that means. You know, we also found out in the course of this that we also have the similar grant for Brewbaker Park back here. So I'll be reviewing the details of that grant and then seeing if we need to make any immediate improvements to Brewbaker Park because this is in perpetuity. It can't go away. It is like that until forever. So um, I just wanted to update everyone. I did bring the mayor up to speed on this when we found out last week. Um, but again, I just wanted to bring up that we are working on a piece of information to give the council that it further explains it all and what the possibilities are. Um, right now, if we were to sell it, what we would have to do is go and inquire um, fair market value of the current pool. So if the pool is two acres and the fair market value is sake of easy math, $150,000. We now have to go get $150,000 worth of city property that is not already designated as a park and make it a park. So that's what we would have to do if we wanted to go through with that sale. Um, so again, a lot of stipulations. We are in the process of getting those ironed out and then once we have it, we'll give it out to council. If they made that stipulation in the bond pool, do you think they have a reason for it? Yeah, they took out $40,000 instead of looking at other fund funding sources. I would have never took a $40,000 loan out to buy something that I could never change. So I would have looked at other funding sources, but I can't explain what that administration did or that council did when they approved it. But the city also took out bonds for that pool. Similar to where how the city got in some issues with Twin Creeks taking out bonds and it failing, it's the same, from what I've been told, the same administration that authorized all that kind of got us into this too. When did we buy the pool? Back in the 60s. 60s. It was Madge Shell House and all that. Yeah, it had been seven series if it was Madge. Mm, Madge, House, Madge Shell House signed the grant paperwork. I have a copy of it in my office. Right, no, I'm not saying she did, but I don't think it was the 60s. Then. When the, yeah, it was the pool bought Dip and Dive in 1960. Okay. I'll look, because on our, our, our capital it says 1960, so let me retract that. I don't know if that's the age of the pool when we bought it. Okay. You're right. Now I'm thinking about this. I think it was 1980-something, 1990. You're right. Mad was you're correct. city manager in the 80s. Yep, you're right. You're all right. So they must have, the pool itself must have been bought in the 60s, and that's why we, we'd appreciate it from that point in time. That's what it is. That's what I'm getting confused. So you're right. Thank you for correcting so it was in the, whatever, she was the manager. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any, any other questions on that? More information to come? Yes, thank you, yeah. Mr. Lindsay. Is, what, have you uh, had conversation with the uh, with Mark on this? Yes, he's aware. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yep. Um, Carl, Carlisle one alcohol ballot measure update. So we will be meeting uh, Wednesday to get that process going. I've already got all the forms and Sagelson's gonna be joining us. Um, so we'll be meeting at Penny Lane, um, just getting together the group together. One of the things that you all need to discuss is a public information campaign that we need to do. However, we wanna do that. We have that on the agenda for tonight to talk about. 
um, as, as long as, as, I mean, in conjunction with the charter. So if we do the charter in a timely manner, maybe we just kind of throw that on there as well. So we can get some ideas together. Uh, reserves at Honey Creek, that is the D.R. Horton development off 235. Um, that uh, preliminary plat hearing is set for 5-16-23, that's 6 p.m. at Smith Park Shelter House. So what that is, is we've all already been through the zoning part. That's when everyone was coming to our meetings, preliminary plan that says, all right, this is how big the lots are going to be, the setbacks, um, what's it, what is it going to be zoned? Um, that's when it got changed to an RPUD. So that's the zoning side of things. Now what comes next is actually taking that massive parcel of land and breaking it into all the pieces they want to break it into. The subdivision or the plat is what we call it. So that's coming in front of planning board, um, then it will come to council next. Um, so we don't have a date for council yet uh, on that yet, uh, but it will probably be either the first or second meeting in June that you guys will um, uh, hear on that uh, lot split as well. Um, TIF legislation, uh, timeline, uh, TIF legislation number one timeline is attached. So we have a slew of TIF legislations that we need to do. This is just for the one of them. So we've already uh, finalized the incentive district maps. Actually, the, they did, they sent it to us. Uh, we did uh, mail the property owner, uh, which is one property owner. We delivered that um, by April 14th. So the next step is May 5th. Council is going to have the first reading of that TIF legislation on May 15th. Second reading is going to be on June 5th. Then it has to sit for 30 days and then you guys will vote on that on June 17th. So that is a process as prescribed by the Ohio Revised Code. Um, in those uh, meetings, we, um, well, we won't discuss it at the first or second meeting. It's just, it's just in like a hearing per se, like you say it's for the record. So you'll actually have the public hearing when you vote on it. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. Uh, I'll answer them as best as I can, but I at least wanted to share the timeline with council since you guys will be voting on that legislation. Friendly reminder, we have residential development traffic study presentation that is next week, uh, Monday, I mean, I'm sorry, next council meeting, Monday, May 15th. That's here at the regular council meeting and that is the uh, impact traffic, citywide impact we did on major intersections. Um, we did have an addendum done to it because the Miami County development got denied, so that's no longer going through. So we wanted to see how that was gonna impact the traffic studies and then we added another intersection to that as well, which was Boo Baker and Lake. So we do have one mistake I made. So on the ordinance, that is 2023-30, that is the Haddock's lease. So this is a lease we did new this year that the city has taken over some of the major infrastructure projects that we quite frankly uh, need to do. Um, so one thing that was left out during that discussion with Jake is I failed to mention anything about the fence and then the access road. So right now, the lease terms in front of you guys, bullet point number five, it reads, the city shall maintain during the term of this lease the following properly currently located at the lease premise. That is a white garage, six cinder block dugouts, light poles and their attachments and accessories. The concession stand, specifically the building only, that is no contents, um, cement, bleachers and flagpole. The association shall be responsible for all other maintenance at the lease building premises, including but not limited to <laughs> maintaining a roadway suitable for ingress and egress by users thereof and all fences erected at the lease premises. So when we met, that's not the deal that we set out. What it should read is as follows. The city shall maintain during the term of this lease, the following property currently located at the lease premise. White garage, six cinder block dugouts, light poles and their attachments and accessories, the concession stand specifically building only, cement bleachers and flagpole. Um, and the fences and the and, uh, uh, the ingress and regress for the um, road. We do that because our water plant splits a road with them going into the park, so we usually lay the gravel down for them. So we w wanted to capture that into the tip. So in, we wanted to capture all those uh, uh, permanent structures, essentially what we're going for, anything that's permanent there. So if the baseball association were to move, pick up and leave, they're gonna be responsible for anything they can pick up and take. Right now they have like a little, how big is your shed down there? Like a tiny six by eight shed. Which one? The, yeah, two. Well, your two sheds that are smaller. We have the white garage. And the, yeah, I got the white garage. The one behind the white garage is, is uh, 16 by 20. And then the small red shed that will be replaced here hopefully this week or next. Um, currently is 10 by 14, but it sure. will become a 12 by 20. Gotcha. So anything they could physically take them when they leave. They can't take a bleacher, the cement bleachers. They can't take the fence. So that's how we're, we're writing the uh, new lease. So council has two options. You can break the rules of council and introduce the new legislation tonight, or you can amend it before you vote on it in two weeks. Council? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what we'll do. We'll wait 
two weeks and re configure it. Awesome. Uh, sure. Okay. <clears throat> the uh, changes, can you email that out to us, please? Email it? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That way we'll have sure. the verbiage for mm -hmm. the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That'd be helpful. Sure. Uh, that is all I have. I mean, I'm going to remember things, but I'm not going to remember after <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Well, that is all I have for the state manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. No doubt. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? In his report? Mr. Bond. Did you meet with Mr. White about his property and what was going on there as far as the country or Yeah, yeah, we met. We, have a quad, yeah, we met quite a few a little ago. It was a good conversation. Okay. Um, he has suggested some things with, uh, we're going to get with Arbor. They had made some slight changes, which you guys will get once we go to another map. We haven't had any finalized. Uh, but he had some good he had some good comments. Um, so basically, what we're going to end up doing is that cut through um, where it, it comes on Addison New Carlisle Road. <coughs> we're going to actually move that. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not moving that back. The access to the actual development where you come in Addison New Carlisle and you turn left to go into the development. We're going, we're looking at pushing that back. So what we're trying to create is more of a gap between where that cut through is and then where people turn out of the development. He suggested that. Um, other than that, he was open. Uh, we haven't met back up yet. We plan to do that. So that was still early, was very early to me to begin with, but I at least wanted to get his opinion on it. Uh, but I'm glad we met because like, I, think, I think that he blended some great information with moving that entrance to the development back to create, create that gap, to be honest. Other than that, he seemed to be supportive. You know, So I think he's, like anything else, just concerned about the traffic coming through his property. Okay. I was just curious if I ever, I know you guys are trying to make connections mm -hmm. for a while. Or whatever. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Ball, Mr. Lindsay. Question, and it may be more for the developer than you, but you may know. By moving that drive north, how would that affect or impact the way they have things laid out? They're, they're just going to move a couple of houses down. They don't have to do that. If you look at that site plan, they actually have a street coming out that kind of curves down. It comes out. Yeah. That comes and it comes that. So they're going to move it up to there. They're just moving that straight and taking that one in and okay. all the sacking it all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Appreciate thank it you. as always, sir. Well, the committee reports on tonight. Moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, all of the above, please go to the podium. We'll need your name, address for the record, and please keep your uh, comments to five minutes. We'll keep time on, so everyone has to keep time. Do you know? Please. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Is this a time to quest ask a question about the garbage cans? Sure. Is it the right open, time? Yeah, okay. Open, open comment. Um, well, you know, I'm pretty much wanting to kind of keep it like it is, but I wonder if there is anything, and if there isn't, I think should be, about the trash cans having to be closed. Closed? Or yeah, the, yeah, when they set them out, the lid, there used to be a thing saying your lid had to be completely closed so the trash couldn't blow all over. Is that already something that's there? I, I think when they pick up what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, they don't want them packed full where you've got three or four bags sitting on the very top with the lid, you know what I'm saying, to where it's just completely over full. And, you know, really okay, because I think that's one of the main problems is they can't get their lid down and then all that trash blows all over before it gets picked up. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I think that is a problem where the cans are sitting afterward, as long as they're off the street, I don't think is, but... But I do think that's a problem, at least, particularly at a couple houses on our street. They have so much trash they, and not enough trash cans, they can't get the lid down, and then half of the trash is still there after they pick it up. Yeah. So I wasn't sure whether that was anything that was already. I don't think it's, it's not defined real clear on that, is it, Mr. Bridge? You know? Yeah, it's in the contract terms. Yeah, it's, it's got to keep, it's got to be closed. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought I read something somewhere bit, with, the, is, it, is it the contract with the trash? Mm -hmm. Because I thought when they were starting to pick up the trash, it said that you had to have your trash can closed. I think the main problem we face is that what we have now is not enforced. I think the administration really needs to work on enforcing the rules we already have, and I don't think we'd really be having issues with the trash can. 
that they'd be off the street and they wouldn't be blowing all over. Well, it's a tricky, it's a tri tricky time too because you think you know, trash obviously starts, you know, people start putting their cans out on Sunday. Obviously, the city building is closed, and then by the time trash rolls around, you know, depending on where you live, anywhere from what maybe 6:30 to 8 or 9, I guess, just depending on where you live. So the cans already done been emptied, and the, and the issue that you're mentioning is kind of no longer existent by the time the city opens up and gets moving in the morning on Monday. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, it's something we can always keep an eye on. Yeah, because this is something that happens regularly, not just every now. I mean, I see work could happen every now and yeah. then, but I I think we really need to work on enforcing what we have more than in making more rules myself. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Thank you Janelle. All right, anyone else? Now, what all did you want for me? Name and address? Yep, name yep. and address. Okay, Bernie Palmatier, 411 West Madison Street. Um, is, it, is it within the scope of our discussion regarding the four lot, the houses that are going to be built on Madison? Yeah, you can. I can mention that? Yeah. Um, first of all, let me say this. I am not a NIMBY. Uh, in fact, I really believe in the mission of Habitat. So. Uh, this is not a NIMBY type of, of approach to the situation. Um, was I incorrect in not ask, asking the gentleman who was here before, uh, are any of the properties, the houses being proposed, going to have a basement? My understanding is Habitat usually never puts in basements. No. And I didn't know if the other two. Mm -hmm. So there'd be no basements in them. Um, I know several of my neighbors are concerned about the difference in the architecture between the houses existing there and the ones that are about to build. Um, so a friend of mine suggested a hedge. <laughs> Planting a hedge that would you know, prevent people from necessarily seeing what architecture went in there. That's just a, a thought. My friend also asked me, uh, how many square feet are the houses that are being put in? I looked at, on this brochure that I got last time I was here. And it doesn't say anything about square footage of the property. So I'll answer this for you, sir. Uh, two of the houses will be 2,074 square feet, which is, to be honest with you, much larger than the majority of the houses already over there. Uh -huh. um, one house is 1,880 square feet, which again is much larger than the majority of the houses over there. And the last one will be just a shade under 1,500 square feet. Two of the houses will be ranches, two of the houses will be two stories. Um, none with basements again. Um, even the houses over on Madison now, majority of those basements are, are not useful basements. Uh, most of them have very low walls. Um, they're mainly storage. Um, I, I, so. I, I was joking with my wife the other day. I said, if we have a tornado warning, how many should we invite to our basements? I mean, she said, I don't think they'll show up. So I said, um, if I, I would if I were. You know. I mean, so for I mean, for I mean, those are those are much larger homes. The average home in New Carlisle is just a shade over a thousand square feet, maybe eleven hundred. So these are much larger homes than what's currently in New Carlisle. Uh, um, no. I live in one of the bigger homes in New Carlisle. Mine's thirty six hundred. But no basement. And then you were saying that three foot setback is it's that's, they're, they're, they're going to be pretty close to each other, right? There's Only one of them has a three-foot setback. Only one of them? Oh, OK. Um, I'm not an expert on construction, but the habitat thing we got the last time I was here has all these specifications for exterior walls, windows. Who, who does the oversight on construction? The county. It would be, be inspected by the county, just like anybody else. Oh, is that? So okay. They would have to be up to code and use all the proper materials. I mean, do, do we have somebody who knows what all this means about the different KD2 and all the different construction elements that they put on here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not thinking that, that Habitat's going to build one of the most expensive homes in the world. They're, I'm sure they're going to build something as cost effective as they can. I'm just wondering, I don't know all the details on I mean, the specs. They're they're going to build builder grade homes. I mean, which is every new home you see is builder grade construction, unless you want to pay for, you know, higher quality. But I mean, I, I've toured 
probably 12 or 13 habitat homes now. Uh, they're just as good as the house they're rebuilding over here on Orth. Uh, Construction-wise, will be just as good as the new developments are. I mean, they use two by six exterior walls, uh, R30 insulation, um, you know, high quality siding. I think they're the couple of the renderings they showed us, there's gonna be some brick or, or block or rock fronts, some stone front on it. So, I mean, will it be exactly like what's over there to the T? I doubt it. I mean, because to build a, a fully brick home um, is, you know, for the size of these houses, it would probably cost you about forty or $50,000 more versus putting a brick or, or stone front and then vinyl siding on the sides in the back. Um, but I have no, I mean, the county will expect, county engineers will expect, county engineers will approve the plans. Uh, they're not going to approve something that, that isn't up to code. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It sounds like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Is that an assumption I'm making? That I should? And yes, an assumption. <laughs> uh, last but not least, <laughs> is there still a room for an input from the citizens regarding the architecture of what they build? Is, it, is there still room for that, or is, it, is this a done deal already? I uh, asked that specific question when they first brought this up. They said they would do their best to make it compatible with other homes. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Oh, Thank you, sir. Another comment on the May 16th planning board will be talking about that. Okay. So when I said earlier, the May 16th will approve the site plan, elevations and all that, that is, we'll get the renderings, what it's going to look like. It's all open meeting. I just printed out the legal advertisements today with 120 of them, so you'll all be getting that in the mail. So come to the May 16th meeting, because that's when we're going to talk about what they look like. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Anyone else? Okay. I'm Dave Fitz. I live at 500 West Madison Street. Um, I'm just wondering, these are Habitat for Humanity houses then that are going over there. Do they pay the same property taxes that everybody else does in the area? I know the probably rental ones will, but I'm just curious about the other two homes. It would stay, yes. be the same, correct? I don't see why they would not. Yes. They say they pay the same rate we do because we we voted on that school many years ago, and it was a half percent tax increase to the citizens of the city. Well, that's, a, that's an income tax. What's that? That's income tax. Yeah. So you the well, yeah, that was income tax. That was income tax for so, that because we were going to make that into the cop shop, fire station, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, they're going to be responsible for the same amount of taxes as anyone else. So. But, yeah, I'm just curious if property taxes will be the same as, as for those citizens that it is for the rest of the citizens in the county. Yeah, property taxes are set by the county, not by the city. Um, their income tax is set by the city, and they'll, they'll be required to pay that. The only thing they might get um, is some favorable loans from Habitat, um, where, where Habitat will, will assume some of the responsibility. But... As for their property taxes, their property taxes are based on the value of the home, just like yours and mine are. Uh, their income tax will be based off their income. So, you know, if they're, you know, if they're making $100,000, they're responsible for $1,500 in, in city income tax. So there's, there's nothing, you know, just because it's, it's, it's a Habitat home, they, they don't, they're not getting any special breaks from the city or the county. Habitat is taking any, any, any responsibility for that. Like I said, what they'll, you know, in the last meeting is they secure favorable loans for their for their customers their customers go i mean he went through it at, at, at two meetings ago i mean they go through a lot of uh, a lot of paperwork to find people for habitat it's just not anybody uh they have to go through financial classes they have to go through home maintenance classes uh there's a waiting list so you know um, but as for taxes no they'll be responsible just like you or i to pay pay their property taxes and their um, income taxes and levies and everything else, just like okay. everyone else does. That's, that's all I had, just to see what the tax. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Kelsey, <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't be shy. You got it. Um, I was wondering. Can I get your name and your address, please? Just give your last name for the record and your address. Yeah. Polo 614 West Jefferson Street, New Hill. K-O-V-A-L. Say that one more time. K-O-V-A-L. Okay. You get it? 614 West Jefferson. Right. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, go ahead. Um, I, my question was, what are the laws against having uh, chickens in the city? What and, are they? Yeah, and I mean, what are the reasonings behind them? Um, I don't have it in front of me, but basically they're not allowed because it's, you know, it's in our code basically, and, and it lists all kinds of animals you can't have. Basically, farm-related animals, you know, for, you know cows, horses, um, chickens. rabbits, chickens, hens, um, ducks, you name it. Uh, so it is. It is written in our code that they that, that chickens are for him. How do we change the code? Uh, it would be up to city council to make that change and and allow. So I assume that you are pro chickens for in the city. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, you can petition council to change any ordinance, but council has. The final say if we do it or not. Am I correct, sir? Uh, yes, I would yeah. agree. And I also think she's going to petition actually for the voters. Yeah. There's a way for that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did we answer all your questions, young lady? Can I ask why? You, why, why are you an advocate of having chicken? That, that's what I was getting ready to ask. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. That's what I was going to ask. Price of eggs lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I what I think it is is that people believe that they're stinky and loud and uh, cause diseases, but when they're well cared for, they don't. And they don't um, they don't pose any threat to neighborhoods in New Carlisle. And um, I think that it uh, stops kids from doing animal 4-H. Okay. Are you looking at a 4-H project or okay. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is because I don't want to, you know, I mean, this council wants to get into that whole discussion. I mean, there's always pros and cons to every side of every subject, whether it's, you know, dog, or chickens, or habitat, or humanity, or whatever it may be. So that's, that's a, sometimes it's a tricky thing. And that's why there's seven of us, because uh, I may disagree with, say, chickens in the city, but, you know, maybe Dale does agree with it. So uh, that's, you know, that's for council, and, and we have discussions, and we talk with the citizens, and you try to make the best decision possible, so. Um, but um, that's, that's how it goes. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank yeah. you for coming. Though. If you ever have any more questions or comments, you can always come back or email anybody from council or, or call us. Thank you for coming. Right. Anyone else? Yes, please. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Since you made that var variance for the lots on Madison, does that mean they're going to go ahead and build them to that specification, but then you're going to change the zoning for anybody else, that somebody else has to make bigger lots? Well, it's going to change, it, it will change the zoning for those four houses only on that specific lot. It doesn't affect anything else in the city. If I'm answering, if I'm understanding what you're asking. Yeah. Well, he said something about you were going to reverse it and change the zoning. Then, is it going to go back to R7 or whatever it was? What are what are you going to change down the road? He said he would make it appropriate for those houses. Currently, it's R2. Currently, it's R2, which is large lots, much okay. larger um, than than what's over. 
and then so you are going to vote to change it to an r4 r5 r7 which is smaller. but then i thought he said that that's going to be temporary and then you are going to a few months later the council is going to change it did you not say that no that's not what i said Ms. mrs zimmerman what we're going to do we we made a vote this evening to get the ball rolling so they can start construction or whatever they're going to do because mm -hmm. it takes months to get zoning changes changes done so in the future what next month or two months from now we will have an ordinance in front of us to to make it a permanent change for those four lots mm -hmm. that's the change we temporarily did it now but in the future we will make it permanent and it oh, will okay. only affect those four lots nothing else over there nothing else around it will be affected because these lot sizes are smaller <clears throat> than the other lots in the area right so we have to change the zoning because of the lot size okay and it only so they affects, will still be built on those smaller they're lot still sizes. going to be built on smaller lots and and we're just going to make it permanent instead of a temporary change okay now i understand. be a permanent change okay now i understand okay. thank you all right thank you ma'am thank you thank you all right anyone else all right moving on to resolutions none moving to ordinances miss burner if you would please okay i have ordinance 2023-29 introduced on april 17th public hearing in action tonight <laughs> An ordinance amending ordinance 17-32 regarding processing fees for credit card transactions at the city administration building. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadwall. Mr. Bridge. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. So we back in 2017, while well, still in my infancy as city manager, I uh, brought an ordinance to council uh, for charges for credit card uh, processing fees that people pay when they come to their city building and they pay their water bill. Well, um, they are increasing that rate, and I went back and I said, all right, we got I know we remembered this ordinance. Uh, we got to amend the ordinance, but long story short, moving forward, the credit card fees don't need to be approved by council. That's like an administrative function. And that's detailed in charter section 4.13 and 502. So we are having council amend that original $1.95 to the 225 just to stay current with that ordinance they passed in 17. But moving forward, any any increase of those fees, I'll always discuss it with council, but there'll be no legislation. So really tonight, we're just amending that ordinance from 2017. And again, this is just for people who come to the city building to pay with their credit card. We have many options for people to pay that don't cost a thing. So this is just a convenience. Okay. Council, any discussion? Are you ready, Ms. Burner? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? No. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. That passes six to one. Moving on, we have ordinance 2023-30, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on May 15th. An ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, to lease a portion of the city's waterworks property to the New Carlisle Baseball Softball Association Incorporated and Ohio Nonprofit Corporation. Ordinance 2023-31, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on May 15th. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2022-62. Ordinance 2023-32, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on May 15th. An ordinance extending the franchise for the curbside collection and disposal of residential residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Ordinance 2023-33, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on May 15th. An ordinance amending section 1460.25 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to address the placement of residential trash and recycling containers. 
Thank you very much. We went to other business, additional city business, uh, charter review and alcohol ballot measures, public campaign discussion. Um, I know uh, we kicked the charter review down the road a few times. Um, I, my opinion is we need to just find a set of date for its own meeting and, and not tack it on to another council meeting if that's okay with you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, no, I agree. Is that I mean, any opinion on that, Mr. Cook, Mr. Is that all right with you? To say another date? Mm -hmm. you? Yeah, it's a seven day. It's a uh, it depends on that date. I'm trying to get my calendar up here. <laughs> Mr. Bridge, what's your availability? <clears throat> um, I can't. Well, we don't have time to do it this Thursday or Friday anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, I'm booked for the next three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm solid. You know, uh, I have some time in June, the the week of the twelfth. That whole week is open. Up until then, I'm booked. After or before the twelfth? Most thirty the, days before the, November. The twelfth and, and that, 90, that week. Ninety days before November. So that would be August, August, September, yeah. September, October, November. Yeah. So we at least got to get everything to the Board of Elections, 90 days, should yeah. council want anything to go on to the ballot. Yeah. So if we can do it the week of the 12th, June 12th, I'll stick it on my calendar and I'll be free. That's fine with me. But right now, I, I, I'm booked up until then and the following week's booked. I mean, I'm a busy guy, what can I say? You said June 12th, Mr. Lincoln. The week of the 12th. Uh, the week of the 12th. It can be the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, 15th, 16th, and even the 17th. We'll go as far as the Saturday. I say schedule it. If I'm not available, how we can do it? 12th and 14th, the only two days I have. 12th and 13th, 14th? 14th. Oh, no, how he can't do it. He's off. Okay. 12th, 13th, and 14th is best. Okay. You can't do the 13th. Okay. Do the 12th? Just do the 12th. Keep it on a Monday. And that's on the council meeting, no? No, it's no. not. No. no. It's the 19th mm -hmm. council meeting. That's. Oh, okay. Uh, the council meeting oh, on the 20th. Let me get that off of there. Yeah, the 20th, yeah, because yeah. of the night, your night, your June There we go. What time do you want to do for 6 o'clock? 3 p.m. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> I'm fine with that. I, <laughs> no, I can make it work if that's what you wanted. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing. You got, I, I work with you all. You all six, said it, and I work with you all. 6 is fine. 6? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right, 6 p.m. June 12th. Yep. Are we going to do the charter review and the public information campaign for al alcohol? I say we play it by ear. If we're, if we're not tied up real long on charter, then we can carry on to it. Okay, I'm still going to put it in legal action. Yeah, put it in the ad, and okay. if we don't get to it, then we'll adjust accordingly. And we're doing this at what, six, you said, or seven? Six. Six. Two. Building open then? Yeah. June 12th. June 12th. This is a Monday. So both things on here on the agenda Correct. here. We we'll put them both we'll on there. On the, okay. And if for some reason we can't get to it, then we'll just do another meeting. Okay. Yeah. 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 It'll, it'll be open meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you need a motion to set that? If you want to, Anna? That's all right. We're fine. All right. Open for any other discussion. I would like to commend Chief Trustee on the side of the fire department for the great open house yesterday. I, uh, my daughter was in town visiting with her two boys, 18 and 15. Today. So I heard nothing but good things about it. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And I thank all the citizens for coming out like we did. We had a tremendous showing and tremendous turnout from the citizens. Uh, the kids had a great time, which was, you know, for us was a big thing. And um, I think we opened up a little bit, a few of our citizens' eyes with Paul, what it costs to run the fire department. Um, but also a big thank you to IGA and Aeroclean for donating the food for the event. Um, but it was, it was definitely a fantastic time and good turnout for everybody. And a big part for us all, too, is for our levy that's on the ballot for tomorrow. And we vote yes for it and for the health of it. Well said, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Motion. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. We don't have any special comments. We have seven o'clock. Do we not have to add anything? No. Discuss the. Uh, mm -hmm.
I'll call Paul now. Joanne Cheney, 307 South Scott Street. I would like to just remind the city or ask them to report to me when they do anything on that street the next time because when they came down to resurface it about a year ago, I did not know it and I couldn't get my car out because my house only has a back out onto Scott Street. I have no other way of getting in from the back or any other way. And so I had to cancel a couple appointments I had because they did stop, got my car out, put it up on Madison, but then I had to walk. So I'm just asking for somebody to say to me, we're gonna put gutter in, we're, I mean, we're drainage in, we're gonna line the street, we're gonna do something to it mm -hmm. so that I can be prepared that day. Okay. Okay? All right, thank you. Anything else? Ms. Cheney, we always send notification out when we do massive road repairs like that. We usually put no parking signs out along the street, and then our service director usually notifies each homeowner on that lot street. So I'm sorry that got like that got through you, it didn't get to you somehow. But we do a pretty pretty good notification period when we do massive street repairs like that. But um, if it slipped through the cracks, we do apologize, and we'll make we'll make it better next time. Because my house is built from the edge to edge. Mm -hmm. I can't go around it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Burge. Anything else? Adjourn. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Mr. Lindsay to adjourn. Um, who was the second? Me, Mr. Yeah. Lindsay. Okay. <laughs> Wild Bill. Uh, Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. What? Vice Mayor Grin. Yes. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lynch. Absolutely. Motion to adjourn accepted. We're going to one. You can oh. stay. You can